The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Uh, we are delighted to have you on the broadcast today. Thank you so very much for consenting uh, to come on and discuss with us um, your expertise uh, and your, your sense of patriotism and the duties uh, of filing a criminal complaint with the FBI regarding Mr. Obama's uh, birth certificate that he presented some time ago. Uh, thank you very much for the work that you're doing. Oh, thank you very much. I, I'm also a fellow New Yorker. Oh, you really? Where in New York did you live? Because you're not in New York now, I take it. No, I'm in, in Bellevue, Washington. Uh, I was uh, used to live in Rigo Park, and uh, where in Rigo Park? I used, I used to live in Rigo Park. I was born in St. Misericordia Hospital in uh, in I think it's Manhattan. If where it's in it's the Bronx, something else now. It's in the Bronx now. Misericordia is in the Bronx. I yeah, used to live in Rigo Park uh, in uh, Left Rack City. Uh, that's on 57th Avenue there in Rigo Park. Yeah, I, I, I went to PS 190. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> Very well. Listen, uh, let's get down to business here. Uh, yeah. You have done something extremely critical in the annals of um, the, uh, the, what has been going on now with Obama for quite some time. And he, um, he presented a birth certificate that the whole world, at least most of us knew, was perhaps a forgery. Um, yeah. But you it's, have it's been involved... It, it's actually not a birth certificate. It is a certificate of live birth. Okay. Yeah. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience? You know, I understand sure. you are an international expert. Now, you are an expert on scanners and document imaging. Is that right? Uh, oh, yeah, for quite a few years. I, uh, I'm known basically in the industry. All the manufacturers know me. In fact, I've been consulted by Bell & Howell when they were still in business. In fact, uh, the um, uh, the Justice Department actually called me up, and uh, um, as well as a few others in the industry, and asked us if uh, if it would mean anything, or uh, 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 if it would change competition if Kodak bought Bell and How. And I was one of the few people they called to ask their uh, our opinion. But I I, I started out with a, as a uh, in my education is accounting and also geology. And I owned a typesetting company here in, in Seattle for about 11 years, where we typeset everything from math books to journals and hundreds of books, uh, everything, forms. And then I got into the business of selling the, the document imaging software and scanners. Uh, I actually started selling my first scanners with Ricoh's back in 1991. So I've been in the business and started this one in 93. So. I not only know how the scanners work, but I sell them, uh, and, uh, and and in, including the document imaging software that I've sold to counties and city governments all over the place on the West Coast. Even started on a 10 or 15 uh, um, uh, what they call service bureaus, companies that actually go to uh, government offices or companies and do their scanning. I've, so you, 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 there's no doubt about it. Business, yeah. There's no doubt about it. You are well versed, and you've oh, yeah. got a long career, uh, yeah. and continuous career, uh, in scanning and reading documents and typesetting right. and understanding that process. Uh, it, it is a it is a unique background uh, that I have. Um, it, I'll tell you how the whole thing started. A friend of mine who actually lives in New York told me that. I knew about Obama giving his speech on the morning or the yeah the morning of the 27th of April. Right. And then uh, uh, almost uh, shortly thereafter, a friend said, "Hey, you know, uh, a graphic artist had found layers in the PDF that they presented." So I downloaded it the day after. And uh, uh, could you which explain? Is very strange to, could to, you explain to, to, to put in a, a PDF online? It was really strange. Could you explain to? Uh, in, in layman's terms, what layers would be on a PDF? Because I don't think, you know, the average person understands exactly what you're saying when you say there are layers in the imaging. What was that? All, what do you mean by that? Uh, I'll explain. Um, you uh, first, I get what what should have been presented, and what basically they had a a meeting, uh, a press conference at 8:48 a.m that morning, about an hour before Obama gave his speech. And you could read it online, and basically their lawyer, their counsel, uh, whose name is uh, Robert Bauer, right. had said that, that they had sent a lawyer from Seattle to 
to um, Hawaii to pick up a form, uh, and it was a paper copy. Now, we think it may be two paper copies, and then fly from Honolulu to, the, uh, to Washington, D.C., um, and they regarded, reg I think, by 7 or 8 o'clock Tuesday afternoon or something like that. Or, or four o'clock, I think they reported. But the point is, is this: it was really, it, it is not what they presented. Now, it, the way an imaging system works, they were all required to, all the states were required to create an imaging system on their birth and death records. That was a law that I, I have in the on the 22-page report I have up on the website, and the law sections are the last five pages, and it was passed December of 2004. And within two years, all the states had to have it. Now, ironically, I've actually sold scanners to the state of Hawaii, Department huh, of Transportation. I may have actually sold them the scanner, also the Department of, of uh, uh, Health, back in uh, either 2003 or four. I'm not kidding. I may have actually sold them their scanner. So that's very is, interesting. I've sold a lot of people, uh, you know, hundreds, tens of thousands of scanners. So. This is what they should have produced. They would have, gone, uh, say, would have gone to the computer. They would have searched for the person's name. Then you'd see the image come up, and then they would print it out on security paper, which is what the law requires them to do. Then they would have stamped it with a rubber stamp, which they have there. Right. And then they, they would have then put a seal on it. The seal on, on Hawaii is very unique. It's two and a quarter inches. And since it's about three inches from the bottom of the page, it, it couldn't have been done with a hand stamp. It was done with a mechanical electric stamp. I know the type they are, and they produce a lot of force. They could even emboss up to three sheets of paper with no problem. You'd have no problem seeing the seal. Hmm. On what they presented to us had almost no seal. It was more like what they call a watermark done on an image. And uh, you know, there really wasn't a physical seal on there, which makes it illegal. Uh, right off the bat. But there were so many things. Now, answering the question regarding what did we get, we got a PDF. A PDF stands for Portable, document, uh, portable Electronic Document. Uh, I think Portable Electronic Format, I think. Uh, and ironically, one of my friends actually was on the committee back 20 years ago coming up with the standard for uh, PDFs. So there was a whole n a number of companies actually uh, was a consortium that coming up with the standards. But anyway, what they presented and what I downloaded, you could clearly see by the headers, and it's listed as number eight on the, uh, on the report I have. You could clearly see the, the, the text of where the layers were, and it's layers, what is it, 13 through 21 uh, or 22. Now, for people who don't have a copy. Nine layers. Doug, for people who don't have a copy of your... Um your report, and of course they can go to your website and get it a little bit later on. Uh, we're talking about the actual document that was presented, and that uh, because of the way it was uh, produced, it's got layers of production on it. And let me just add a right. word to what you were saying regarding this portable uh, document format: is that uh, these? I mean, states have to have a secure way of making sure that any document down to its checks that they write or any other document they issue is an authentic document that is not some forged right. copy made by somebody just using a, a Xerox copying machine. Uh, for people, right. people who are, have to transfer uh, bearer bonds or either legal tender documents have to be done by specific code. And, um, right. and when that takes place, there should effectively be no layers. It, the imaging should all be the same. And the seals, if there are any, such as should, should, should have been on this document, should have been clear and visible. Uh, am I so far explaining it correctly? You got it. In other words, the, the document that the, the Department of Health in Hawaii should have given him was merely a, a flat image. But, in fact, not a PDF. It should have been like a, a group for TIFF is really what is stored in the document imaging system. And then they just print it out and they give them a piece of paper. But that's not what, we, what any of us got. Uh, what we got was basically this PDF. What was interesting, the PDF I got said the origination date when they created it and finished it was on the 27th, but at 12.09 p.m., which I think is that roughly after... That's, That's after, after the, he spoke. The, the news conference. Right. Yeah. 
they, yeah, and then I was able to get one from somebody else a copy that was that was supposedly downloaded within ten minutes after they put it up on the twenty seventh, and it has the same date as as the one I have. Mine says it was actually changed, modified. The header actually says it modified on the the twenty eighth at nine fifty eight a m so they were still changing it after this sh after they did the presentation and i've been told <clears throat> uh, uh, jerome corsi sent me two of them that he got from people and one says it was changed on the ninth and the other one was on the twelfth that keep changing the damn thing yeah. we know it was created uh, on a macintosh and it was cre the pdf part was created on a program that Macintosh has called Preview, which creates a PDF. So we, we know how it was done, but this is not a legal document at all. I mean, it's, it has basically about six different types of errors. Right. Like, for instance, and those are very scanner, visible, even to the, the to a person that's not an expert in this. You can see the typeset errors and the font area, font uh, differences as well on that, that particular right, document. Right. The, the, the one that I first spotted, the way the, these things work when they first had to start scanning the books in, the, the, you get the hospital mails this certificate of live birth. It's a county form, and they mail it to the county, and they put them in bound books. Now, also, they would wind up microfilming them also. This is before the 90s. They, they, that was predominantly how they did it. They had to microfilm it. So if, if he does have one, it would be on the microphone copy, but he doesn't have one. That's pretty sure, because he God would have right. generated this blatant fraud uh, if he had something in Hawaii, which he obviously does not have. Now, uh, the way I first found this thing was pretty obvious, was that when they scanned the pages in, they never took the pages out of the book. They're usually post-bound books. And they just scanned on the flat bit of the scanner, and you saw this curved um, image on the gutter. It's on the left-hand side. Right. And, but what's interesting, the type of the, the name of the hospital does not bend down the two, three pixels that the lines above and below and the title do. So it gave it away immediately. That was the first thing I said, what's going on here? Also, the dates that was the rubber stamp dates on the bottom, on the left and right, um, they are actually two different colors. They're not black. They should wow. Be black. Boy. They're, they're green. They're green. I, and, and the paper, by the way, you can see the paper at, on archiveindex.com, uh, and, and you'll see a link there to the Obama thing. And download it. Now, I'm going to have a, a, a later version where I'm adding a ninth item. The, Could the you? ninth item is basically the signatures of the mother Doug, and the Doug. registrar are wrong. Doug, could they're, you? They're, they're frauds. Could you give your website now so people can, while they're listening to you talk, sure. actually go and it's, see what you're talking about? Give your website out it, right now. It, it's archiveindex.com, www.archiveindex.com. And um, towards the bottom, uh, above the section that has discontinued scanners, you'll see a, a picture of Obama's birth certificate, and you'll see, uh, click there. And then it'll take you to a page where we have the affidavit as well as the the, the latest report. There will be an updated report that will add a, a, a ninth item. The ninth item is pretty outrageous. Before you do the ninth item, can I ask you to go back to the sure. failure oh. near in the gutter, mm -hmm. where because of the way they did it, the you actually did it did not curve down into the gutter, but you can see the borderline there because it was done in a phony way. And also the fonts you were talking about, the two different uh, colors of ink that were used, sure. and then you were the, you, you were going to wrap up with uh, the fact that the, the mother's signature. You, I didn't get the last of that. But show us that sure. gutter again. Now that people can go log on and see, show us that gutter, that it, curved it, image. It, it, it's basically when when you photograph something or you scan something, and you, it's it has a curved paper, an image. It's basically called a parallax. And basically, you see the lines drop down to the left, down and to the left. It's on the left-hand side of the page. That's called the gutter. And, and so all the lines on the form they used, they had a base form that they used, was, was curved. But the type, the typewriter type of the name of the hospital, and also the word male above it, does not bend down. And it should. Right. They told me immediately that the hospital name and the word 
and the other words were basically a different layer or they were added later now the the graphic artist had found that if you ta open it up within uh, Adobe Illustrator, you can actually see the ninth layer layers and the layer with a, a majority of the time, not all of it, is in one of those layers, and you, and that's that they found, they proved it differently than I did. The other part is I didn't even need to know about the layers. Most of the items I found was basically just by looking at the image. In fact, I had exported the image as a as a group four TIFF out of the JPEG, out of the uh, PDF, rather, and it was a file. It was 18.34 megabytes. Okay. And because that's our I time and, and opened it up. Doug, because our time is running short, could you, again, do the, the, the various colors and his mother's signature? Oh, sure. yeah, the, and then okay, I want you the, to tell us about your two, filing of the criminal complaint with the FBI. We only have about four minutes left, and I want to try to get oh, that sure. in. If you can, sure. please. The, the, the two dates on the bottom have two green values. In other words, they were taken from two different forms, probably separated by quite a, a, a lot of dis time. And not all the letters, all the dates are, 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 are there. They grabbed letters or numbers from other forms. Uh, that's the two date parts on the bottom. The signatures are both forged, both and, and denim. If and D is in grayscale and the rest is binary, you can't have that. That's a forged <laughs> signature. And then the, the UK Lely, the, the registrar, the second letter, which I think is an L, is binary, but the rest are grayscale, which means that's been forged. Mm. So, which it makes no sense. You know, it, it goes on and on like what that. What about Dr. Sinclair's uh, telephone? I mean, Dr. Sinclair's signature is that a forgery or what? Because he's. Um, uh, it, uh, it, it was probably his name that was on somebody's certificate. They couldn't get rid of it because. The, the, his uh, senders and descenders touched the, bar, the line above and below, so they had to leave his name. So they had to take his whole name, except the period. The, the period over the I in Richard was binary. That was added. <laughs> so I didn't say that's, that was a forgery, but <laughs> by putting the dot of it, it really does make it a forgery. But it's goofy. Now, I, I sent off the complaint. Uh, it, it was a you basically have to notify the FBI that a crime has been committed, a federal crime has been committed. And, and I, I went through that process and sent it two ways to both Mueller, the director of the FBI in Washington, D.C., and also the agent in charge in Hawaii. So they got it both ways, and I know they, both, they got both of them. Have you so, received any response from them? No, no response whatsoever. It's going to take citizens like yourself to basically write it to them and also the congressman. That's where it's going to go. I've mailed it off to about 90 congressmen. All the congressmen that are in the Ethics and Homeland Security Committees and the senators in the Homeland Security Committee, but the Republicans, I figure the Democrats would run to their lives and be scared stiff. Hmm. Yes. So they're not going to touch it. But uh, and, and I'm not even sure the Republicans are going to touch it, but they should. This is a clear-cut case of forgery. There's a total of, like I said, now eight items. There's going to be a ninth. And it is just plainly outright fraud, including mixing grayscale and binary images on the same scan, and that is impossible. I know how the scanners work, and that was the other major thing. I mean, really bizarre stuff were done on this thing. Why do they you think? They never expected it. They were going to stick the damn PDF up on the uh, on the web i think the the forger expected them to just print the damn thing out and and give them a flat copy but they didn't somebody was lazy and they stuck it up the way it was and and that was it they had to live with it how long has it been since your charge your complaint has been filed with the fbi both in i think honolulu or hawaii and i'll tell you right now I, I have the receipts in front of me uh, uh may 25th May one was mailed May 25th, and the other one was mailed All right. the day later, May 26th. All right, so yep. we got a little time. Not that I expect them to, them to respond, but it's a little early to expect uh, a response. However, the nature of such a filing uh, should incur immediate response from the FBI on a high 
detect forgery such as this right. on such a critical issue. Let's see what happens. Right. Uh, if you could give out your website once again, then sure. we want to encourage people to uh, to email this, to contact their congresspersons, uh, to contact anybody, and send it to Robert Mueller, flood his yeah. email box with this uh, to let him know that something has gone on here that's dreadfully wrong uh, with right. the presenting of this forged document, and it just ought not to happen. The, uh, it's uh, archiveindex.com. It is a nonpartisan issue. It is a NASA security issue, and that's how you have to look at it. I'm not kidding. This is really serious. We don't know really who this guy is. We know who his buddies are, like Bill Ayers, and that scares me more. So really, it's a nonpartisan issue. If you're a Democrat, just think Hillary could be president right now, or, or some other legitimate Democrat. But this guy has basically lied his way to the top. You're pretty smart about this, Doug. Why do you think that they put up such a flimsy document that even a, a school kid could recognize that this, you got different font sizes, you've got binary type of script going on. I mean, it's pretty obvious to the... To the I'll tell you why. They figure they have the media in their pocket. And partially they're right. The media has defended this guy from day one. If it turns out this guy's a raving fraud and has, has submitted and produced a forgery uh, uh, of, of, of this kind of behavior, they're stuck with it. They're married to him, and they're not going to lose their credibility to the public because they'd lose all their credibility, and, and rightfully so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, him, him, I, like I said earlier, I think... The forger expected them to print the damn thing out, then scan it in color, and then put a, a flat image up. They didn't do that. Somebody really screwed up. Yeah. Listen, Doug, it's been great having you today. And we, If we can tap into you a couple of weeks from now to see what progress sure. has been made, I'd love to have you back if you come back once again, let's say in a couple oh, of weeks. Sure. Let's see how far this has developed. But yeah, thank there'll, you. Be a, there'll be an updated one, the final one, probably by this weekend. All right. So come back to the website by Sunday or Monday, and you'll have the, the full, the, the final one, and I'll do another affidavit also. All right, and we'll come back to you as well for more of an interview. Thank you, Doug, so very much for being with us today. And, and, have a, have uh, a great day. You, you do the same. All right. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.